In the greenhouse here is the asparagus fern getting misted daily with the watering system. So I've got to pick out a stand for it. I've got to moss it up, make it look real nice for the show. Here is the asparagus fern. Some people like the pot it's in, some people don't. I kind of like it because the pot color matches the roots. The depth of the pot is kind of equal or a little shallower than the width of the so-called trunk. And I think it's a soft kind of rectangle to go with the rounded canopy on the tree. So I think it's a good match. Uh, you know, and I, I think, you know, it needs the green moss here. So we've got the yellow, the green, the yellow, and the green. And I think that'll look really good once it's mossed up. In the root system here, there is some dark kind of brown colors. So the first stand I'm going to try with it is that one I stained up with the black tar. See if it works. It may not be big enough, but I'm going to see how it works color-wise with the tree. Here's a look at the tree on the dark stand. I think it's not bad. I think the size is quite acceptable. I like the color scheme with it. At least, you know, it matches the dark soil. Maybe when I moss it up, it, I might change my mind. But So I, I think that's the next step. I better get this one mossed up because it may change the way the tree looks. I may not like the dark stand under it once I moss up the soil. We've had such a dry summer this year that moss is a little hard to find, but I have a few spots where I know a lot of moss grows, parking lots, and there's a few uh, abandoned buildings with some moss out front on the pavement. So I'm going to head out now, scrape off the moss and collect it in a bag and bring it home. Hopefully get enough to moss up my asparagus fern. The moss collection went quite well. The first place I looked, there was a nice covering of moss. So I collected a bag of it. I'm going to lay it in this tray which has water in it. And it's nice fine moss. It's not like really thick. It's a thin, thin layer. It was growing in the beside a driveway, like on a paved driveway. So it's not real bright green, but it'll green up, especially when it hits this water, get some sunlight. I get a lot of questions about moss. How do I keep my moss alive? How do I stop it going brown? Well, it's hard. In a dry environment, it's almost impossible to keep alive. Moss needs kind of humidity. It needs a free draining soil and it needs frequent watering with rainwater and fertilizer and that'll keep your moss alive. It's pretty hard to grow indoors unless you have like a you know, a sunroom or a greenhouse. So if you're from an environment, like a dry environment, um, I would try a different kind of ground cover, maybe sedum or something. Uh, moss may just not be worth it. Here's a look at the moss I collected. So there's a, a few different varieties, but nothing too, too wild or different. So I think on the pot here, I might have to take away a bit of the soil. It's, it's a little high. I've got a tray underneath the pot, so when I scrape away the soil, I'm not wasting it because this is the good, the bonsai supply soil, so I don't want to waste it. Okay, I think I have the soil at the right height now. All right, here I go with the moss. So here comes piece number one, and I want to kind of have it between the roots and maybe kind of even growing up the trunk a bit. I'll start right out front here. Pushing the moss down in the bonsai soil. Now this moss has a layer of fine soil underneath it which will really help it. So you have to make sure it's pressed firmly into the bonsai soil can't have any kind of air gaps or it just dries up. Now I'm going to start putting some strips kind of up in the roots like this. Sort of transitional pieces. The moss is at a nice height in the pot, so just slightly below the lip of the pot. 
That's perfect. I'm sure as these roots will grow, it'll rise out of the pot too. Yeah, it's looking nice with the moss here. It really, really looks good. Much better than showing the bonsai soil, that's for sure. Nice round patch of moss here. I'm going to put it right here. Such a beautiful piece of moss. Fairly green too. Here's another big piece. I'll put this on this side. Right on that root. That'll hold that root down into the soil so I won't need the rock. It's been a long time since I mossed up a tree for a bonsai show. It's kind of nice. So here's a variety of different kind of moss. I'll put one clump of it out front. I'll put one over here. Oh, the automatic sprinkler system just went on in the greenhouse. Nice. So I think in 10 days this moss is going to really shape up. It's really going to thicken up. I may even have to prune it before the show just to tidy it up a bit so it's not too, too thick. It's hard to say, but generally that's what happens. Moss takes off and when you give it nice conditions. I'm quite sure I'm going to run out of moss. I didn't collect enough. Here's a look at the asparagus fern now. I think it's looking really nice with that moss around it. I'd like to integrate a bit more moss into the roots here. So I'll need more moss for sure. So off I go, another moss collecting trip. I just take my bicycle, a bag, my scraper, and collect moss. I went out and got some more moss. So this moss is a little thicker and maybe a little greener than the other. So I think the thicker moss will be nice to kind of press between the roots and kind of make a better transition from the moss soil level up into the root base here. All right, I'll continue mossing it up. So I'm going to finish the back here with the kind of uh, shorter moss. So it kind of matches what I have there already. All right, that's, that's mossed up at the back. So I'm going to go around the front now and start adding moss between the roots. So just little pieces. Just so it looks more solid, the base of this plant or tree. Whatever it is. <laughs> I guess I can call it a bonsai because bonsai is a tray planting. It doesn't have to be a tree. It can be a, a plant. kind of looking like a mossy trunk. That's it, I'm out of moss again. <laughs> I think I need, you know, a bit more. Just to put in places. Again, kind of transitioning the moss up the trunk a bit. I got some more moss, so I'll try and do the finishing touches now. I may have to trim some of these wild roots off so they kind of conform more to the trunk shape. I'm sure there'll be lots more aerial roots dropping down and kind of growing alongside the moss in the future. So yeah, especially in the greenhouse with the mister on, I'll get lots of aerial roots. The tree looks super healthy. It would be nice, there's a berry in here. It'd be nice if that turned red for the show, but I don't think it will, there's not enough time. But you know, as I said, for an asparagus fern, it's a pretty good looking asparagus fern, I think. I went out and got another batch of moss. So again, I tried to get a good variety, some thin pieces, some thicker pieces. So I'm just soaking it in the water now, softening up the soil, and then it'll, I'll apply it to the roots of the asparagus fern. I finished adding some moss to the trunk, and I think it looks nice, just subtle kind of touches. So I'm just going to trim off some of these wild roots now. Just kind of 
prune back the ones that are sticking way out of the trunk profile. <laughs> Odd thing to say, but like that. Just kind of cleans that up a bit so it looks a little more natural. Maybe a few here too. Just take the ends off. One sticking out the side here. And I'm sure, you know, this moss will kind of brighten up over the next 10 days and grow in a bit. And I think, I think it'll look pretty good. Hope so anyway. I'm going to give it a watering now. Here's a look at the asparagus fern. The work is completed. I think it's looking quite nice. I didn't finalize a stand for the asparagus fern. I have one more I want to try out and that's that bamboo one. Let's see how it looks on that. Here is a look at the tree on the bamboo stand. I think it's quite nice. You know, you've got similar tonal colors, the roots, the pot, and the bamboo stand. They're not exact, but there's definitely, they definitely go nicely with each other, kind of a golden theme to it. It looks very nice, I think. It's kind of hard to see the lights in the camera now, but, but yeah, I, I think it's, that would work quite well. And again, maybe I'd have to put some feet underneath it just to lift it up a bit. The sun is getting very low on the horizon, so it's hard to get a good shot, but here it is on the red stand. There, you can kind of see it here. It looks quite nice. It's not a bad combination. You can kind of see like the reddish color at the feet of the pot, kind of tone with the stand nicely. Yeah, that's not a bad combination. I don't know what's my favorite. I might have to rewatch the video, look at each one and decide. Um, I think either of the stands I tried would look quite fine. I'm going to try it on the black one again. I haven't tried it on the black one since I mossed it up. Here is a look at it on the dark stand and I don't like it with the moss. I think everything's kind of bright and then you got this dark stand underneath that just kind of disappears. I, I don't like that. So that rules that out. I, I, it looked good with the kind of the black soil before, but I'm not liking it at all now. Here it is on the maple stand. I think it's the best. I think the legs match the color of the feet on the pot. The tabletop kind of matches the pot. The pot matches the roots. I think it it looks quite nice together. I just remembered that I'm using this maple table with the with the frankenficus. So I, it might have to be the walnut table that goes with this one. Or that bamboo one looked quite nice too. Yeah, that's too bad. Um, you gotta have a lot of pots and tables, that's for sure. There's the asparagus fern on the bamboo table. I think that looks good. I, I like all the golden colors. So, I could move it over on the table a bit and put a little accent plant right here on the table beside it. I'll try that. I have this little carved wooden rhino here. that I think looks really good. The wood matches everything. It, it's a good color match. I'm wondering, do I need like a little piece of wood to set it on or is it just okay like that? I think it needs something to highlight it just a bit. So maybe something the f color of the feet here. I'll have a look around and see what I've got. After much searching and trial and error, I found this yellow pot, which matches the color of the main pot quite closely. 
they look pretty good together. Now, I can't have the rhinoceros in here because it gets too high and it's a little deep for the rhinoceros. If it was a little flat one, that's what I was looking for, a flat kind of terracotta one, but I don't have anything like that. So I think I would just have to plant uh, some kind of like ground cover, either moss or grasses or something in here. And that would look really good, give that African theme. So I'm thinking I have some grasses. I'll show you those right here. Now, they're kind of overgrown. It's way too big for this planting. Yeah, it it looks good, the grasses with the asparagus fern, but too big. I would have had to prune it back long ago and put it a chunk of it in a smaller pot. So I'm not going to use that. I'll find something else. Maybe some of the succulents in the greenhouse here. Let's have a look what's available up there. So I've got... I've got the accent plant I used last time, the little jades there. Could look good. Um, the lithops maybe, let's try those. That's kind of a yellowy pot. Let's see if the lithops look any good with it. It may be too small. The lithops are looking good, but... All right, let's try it. So there's a shot of the lithops and it's it is too small it's too insignificant yeah and the pot it's just not the right color the other other one was much better you can see the difference in color so i i really like the rhinoceros maybe i just need like a, a piece of wood underneath it to kind of show it off a bit this one isn't such a nice piece of wood but it's certainly does the trick. I kind of like it. It kind of uh, just gives the rhinoceros a bit of oomph. It tones in nicely. It's not too overpowering with it. So that's a good possibility. The other possibility is to plant something in that pot. So I've just placed this little pot of jades in there, pot within a pot. But it gives me an idea of what it would look like and it, it looks quite nice i don't mind that at all it's yeah very suitable i think i think everything looks good together so i've got to decide between the rhinoceros or something like this tough choice now i could use portulacaria afra here instead of these little jades so planting that I think I'll plant this pot. I'll plant, you know, something succulent in it. See how it looks and then compare it to the rhinoceros. Jay from Blue Jay Bonsai gave me this succulent here that would look really nice in the pot because I haven't planted it yet. So I think that would do. Now it's a little bit small for this pot, but I could put a stone to the one side, kind of balance it. So I think that's what I'll do. Um, Jay may be using the same type of plant for an accent plant on his show entry, but uh, that's okay. I think it's very suitable for the asparagus fern. All right, I've got, actually that one big screen will work just fine. So I'll add a base layer of bonsai soil. All right. All right, I'll get this out of the pot. I, I don't think this has any sharp spikes on it. I'm just gonna check it over. Maybe it does. Um, I should wear gloves just to be sure, but I don't have any gloves out here. Um, maybe I'll use a plastic bag. I don't want to get spines or spikes in my skin because it really hurts. Okay, so here's, here's a plastic bag. I can kind of gently grab the succulent, push it out the bottom, there it goes. So there's the soil it's in, which is, you know, fine. I'm going to, I'm not going to rake out the roots. Uh, I'll just kind of tease the soil out a little bit, uh, maybe not. 
it's kind of fused in with the roots. So, you know, I'm not after a radial root base or anything with this. So I think it'll just be fine the way it is. Yeah. So I'll plant it in here and I'm gonna, I'm going to find a front. It looks the fullest from this view. So I think that should be the front. So I'm going to bring it down on the pot a bit. Move some of the soil out of the way. Just so it's sitting at the right height in the pot. That's pretty good there. Then I can fill it in with soil. Maybe a little more towards the back of the planting. Definitely going to have to up my game on accent plants. It's nice to have a whole bunch around that you can just kind of, I like the stands, just kind of pick them rather than be planting them in that before the show. So I've just got to make sure it's kind of worked in beside the root base here of the other, well, of the other soil. I might take some of these big pine chunks out. Don't need those. Any big pieces of perlite I'll break up because I don't need huge particles in this. Okay, I think that's looking good. Now, I have the main tree or the asparagus fern mossed up, so I would need something on here to kind of match. I don't want it like bonsai soil or even top dressing it with sand. So I think I need some moss on top of the soil level here. All right, here I go with the moss. I, I tried to pick the thinnest moss I could. And I'll just apply it around the edges. Hoping this works out well. So a lot of people ask me, how can you grow moss with succulents? And the the only thing you can do is have humid air and a little bit of misting on the moss. And that should keep it green and alive. And the rest of the soil is quite dry underneath. So you kind of need like a, like a plant room or a greenhouse, something where there's high humidity and then you can have moss on your succulents. Otherwise you can't. because moss requires frequent watering and succulents don't. So the two are kind of opposite each other. Yeah, it looks quite nice with the moss on it. I think it's the, the right look for the, this planting. So thanks, Jay, for the, uh, the little succulent here. It looks, uh, it's quite a nice looking plant. I have no idea what it is, but so most of my, I think all of my plantings today are two-point plantings. So I have the tree, the stand, and an accent plant. You don't have to have a two-point planting. You can just have the tree on a stand. It's fine. And, you know, adding another element is just icing on the cake, I guess. It's just a little extra touch that can make everything look better if you get the right accent plant. It can make it look worse if you don't get the right combination. So I think that's looking quite nice. And again, before the show, I'll go over it, make sure the moss is looking good. It's not overhanging the lip of the pot. Just kind of do a general cleanup. But I think it's looking quite good that, as an accent plant. So let's try it out with the display now. Here is a look at the asparagus fern with the accent plant. I think that looks pretty good. I think that's a nice display. I think the two complement each other really nicely. I think the color of the foliage here is really good with the asparagus fern. Yeah, I think it fits on the this bamboo stand quite nicely. 
So I think that is going to be the display for my asparagus fern. I may have one more display for the Toronto show, and that's my Chinese village penjing. It all depends on how it looks. Um, I will prepare it, so it'll either be in the Toronto show or the Kitchener-Waterloo show, one of the two. If it's looking good for the Toronto show, maybe I'll put it in it. It may have to wait. The leaves are still kind of growing in on the trees. They look a little sparse at the moment. I'll show you what it's looking like now. Here is a look at the village penjing. So you can see, you know, even though the leaves are looking quite miniature as they grow in, it's still a little sparse looking. So maybe, you know, the KW show is, it's 10 days until the Toronto show from now. And then 14 days after that is the KW show. So that's, that's quite a period of time. I could get these canopies filling out quite nicely here in the greenhouse. So it'll probably be the KW show that I, I have this in. I think I have enough for the Toronto show. Last time at the Toronto show, I just showed two trees. And this time, I think I'm up to four. So I think that's plenty. I still have some work to do on my show trees as it gets closer to the show, mossing them up, cleaning them, oiling the pots, making them look just right. So that's all for this series. I'm Nigel Saunders. Thanks for joining me in the Bonsai Zone. <music>